make sure to check out my Patreon for exclusive videos never before seen on YouTube. And don't forget to also check out the memberships on my channel page to join and gain access to perks and see videos early. Make sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell and be notified of new videos. All the support goes to the production of the channel for better content. Now let's get into the video. Real quick before the video starts, a quick announcement. I have updated my Patreon page and changed the tiers within it, as I'll be posting content on there regularly. The content which will not go onto my YouTube page, from personal life stories and more Dragon Ball content, for all of you to enjoy. I have changed the tiers and pricing, as times are hard in the world. So for $1, you can have full access to my Patreon page and the content within it, and it goes towards production and support of my channel. So, if you want to check it out and see some content that will not be on YouTube, go check it out for $1 and show your support. Go join my Patreon, now let's get into the what if. Real quick for the video starts, I just want to clarify something real quick. This is not the movie, this is just one single part that I just did and it was over 40 minutes long. I wanted to give you guys a good treat today. This is the longest single part what if video that I've ever done on this channel and it's probably going to be the, it's, that record's going to say the same. But if you guys want me to continue the series, make sure to watch the video all the way through and let's get to 300 likes. If this video gets to 300 likes, I shall continue on to the next part. But anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. After the defeat of the mighty Frieza, Hees was finally restored back to the universe. Son Goku and his friends would have already returned to back to from Namek by now. Things would finally be peaceful. And things were peaceful for a little over a year. Now, if just for some of those to get out of the way, Goku never went to Planet Yardrat like the original, so that means that he never learned distant transmission or even knows about the Yardratian people being even existing. Life would go on normally until a year later, a mysterious man would then step out of a time machine. And that young man, the name was Trunks. Trunks was kind of off, as he doesn't see anybody. He doesn't sense Frieza, he doesn't sense any of the Z fighters. What's going on? Did he go to the wrong time, maybe? Maybe did he go back too far? But he checked and it was the perfect time. Something's off. Did him going back already mess time up? He went to go find Goku. As he would find Goku at Chi Chi and Goku's home near Mount Paozu. Now Trunks would then introduce himself as Goku already sensed him coming along his way. As now, Trunks would then ask Goku to speak with him privately. Which both of them would then walk near the river and Trunks would then explain who he is and what he is doing here. Goku would be shocked that this is even true, and Trunks would then ask if they can spar real quick. He just wants to see his abilities and if they're all true, which Goku would instantly accept this, and Trunks would then state, good, that means that we'll both be Super Saiyans, which this would shock Goku, as Trunks would actually transform into a Super Saiyan. Now, would Goku be able to turn Super Saiyan? I believe he can, as this similar training to what he did on Yardrat, you could say that he didn't learn as much from the Yardratians, but I feel like either way, I like calling them Yardratians, but either way, I don't think it would necessarily change much. Goku would have still was very intelligent, he would have figured out Super Saiyan. Maybe not as much control, but I feel like he definitely could. And then Goku would have transformed into a Super Saiyan as well. Most of the Z Fighters would have sensed what was going on, especially Vegeta and the others, and Piccolo would have flown all the way over there to go see what's going on. They would have had their little duel, and Trunks was amazed at how powerful Goku was. He was far stronger than he actually thought he was. He could actually fight the androids of his time. He wondered how Goku lost, but he remembers about the Heart Fires, as he never met Goku. The Heart Fires took him out before he could even fight the androids, which was a shame. Trunks would then explain everything about him, the fact that he's from the future, and the fact that within three years' time there will be two evil androids who will then show up, as it took the life of his master, and more. Trunks would then say that not even Super Saiyan can defeat them, but he says that I don't know how strong they are since I can't exactly measure their key, because they can't be sensed, but for me fighting, I can kind of gauge myself where they're at, based off myself, and you might be able to fight them in my timeline. Which Goku would say, oh, well that's good, then I'm going to continue training, then I can beat him. But wait, why didn't I beat him before? Trunks would say that the timeline seems to be already messed up, as Frieza was actually supposed to have survived his onslaught on Namek, and he would have actually been Mecha Frieza, showing up with his father, King King Cold. Now, of course, we all know that either way it wouldn't have mattered if 
Frieza would have showed up, either or not. I know Frieza didn't necessarily show up in the future timeline, but y'all know what I mean from the original. And Trunks would think that it's confusing as Frieza was supposed to appear, and then Key was specially supposed to appear, as he was supposed to be there to fight near the Rocky Wasteland, but he didn't. And that's really confusing. None of the other Z Fighters were there and no one else. By this point, those Z Fighters would have arrived, and Goku would have said to stay back and he used to talk to him privately which they would have respected it, but Piccolo can hear everything. As a member, his Namekian hearing, he can hear across the universe, apparently, was what he stated, which is really scary. Now, by this point, Piccolo already heard everything that they said before, but he's just keeping quiet. Trunks would even explain who his father is and who his mother is, which would shock Goku even more, but I guess he can kind of see it, I guess. But he's surprised that those two would even get together. Trunks would then give Goku the heart medicine and tell him, that within the three years time, this exact location and this exact time, the two androids will appear and they'll strike. If you start feeling any symptoms between then, take this medicine and the exact dosage and it should help cure your heart fires. But then Trunks had to leave shortly afterwards as he couldn't stay. The Z fighters were shocked that he just appeared and now he just left in this machine. They don't understand as Goku would try to hide it, but Piccolo would then tell everybody saying that there's no point hiding it. He would then explain everything to them, and they were all in shock, other than the Trunks being a son to Vegeta and Bulma part. That one's kept hidden for now. But they would then all go their own separate ways. Vegeta wants to know how to transform into a Super Saiyan, but after bugging Kakarot and the machine for so long on the trip while back from Namek, he never got an answer. Well, because Goku didn't even know himself how he did it. This would irritate Vegeta, but... He doesn't really have much of a choice, so he would then go out on his own. Go out into the space and go fight himself. As now by this point, Vegeta is trying to find any way to go Super Saiyan. We know all know how he gets Super Saiyan in the original. Goku would still continue to train with Piccolo and Gohan, helping both of them increase their strength. Those same events would happen the exact same. Now, cutting three years later, Dr. Jiro and Android 19 would still reveal themselves, not Android, 6, not Android 17 or 18, or 16 as well. By this point in time, the Z Fighters would have still met up and Goku would have still fought Android 19. This version of Goku, however, is much stronger than his original self. Now, we don't really know power level-wise how powerful Goku was, but we both know that Dr. Jiro and Android 19 are able to defeat Frieza. So they're at least stronger than Trunks, at least. But Goku's obviously stronger than Android 19. He was mopping the floor with him for a little bit. And Goku, by this point, last time I said, he had a power level of around 300 million, which is twice the strength of his Namek self. So you could say that the androids might be near that power. That's up for debate how powerful they, they would honestly be. I feel like they would probably be in the 200 millions, maybe. It would make sense because they're stronger than Frieza and Goku. But considering the fact that Goku's had three years of training with his progression ability that he has, he's gotten much stronger. He would go from 300 million, he would probably bump up to 600 million. Now, I know numbers don't really matter anymore, but that's a big difference in my opinion, as he's now twice the strength and he's already stronger than he originally was. He's three to four times stronger than he originally was when he fought Android 19. In my opinion, I definitely feel like he would have killed Android 19, destroying him, but the heart fires would have still took him over, and he would have been out of commission. Yamcha would have taken him back to Kami's house. This is when Dr. Jiro was shocked with how powerful Goku was, but he was thankful that he was sick, and now he can't fight no more. But they're going to find him off later. He wants to go reactivate the androids quickly, until Vegeta would then arrive. Now, Vegeta would give the Piccolo treatment to Dr. Jiro, kind of ripping, kind of like ripping his arms off and stuff. But I feel like Dr. Jiro would still get away the same as he did before, not to mention the fact that they can't sense his energy. He would be able to make it to his lab, and he would be able to reactivate the androids. Now, Vegeta does have Super Saiyan, as he originally does. His power level is roughly similar to what it was in the original. You could say a little bit stronger, because he tr obviously trained with Goku in that gravity room for at least a week or two. So you could say that he's roughly a little bit stronger, for sure. But Android 18... Android 17 were finally released. It would have killed Dr. Jiro and released Android 16. Now, during this time, Android 18 versus Vegeta would have gone very similar. Vegeta would have gotten absolutely demolished. Even though he is a little bit stronger, it wouldn't have made much of a difference, as Android 18 was toying with them. The only thing he did was tear up her clothes a little bit and irritate her. She would have still broken his arms the same way as before, and they would have actually let them go 
and they're gonna go goof off and go destroy things because they're bored. They're not as evil as the original androids are from the future timeline, but they're still a bit menacing. Android 16 would mindlessly follow along, as his only goal is to kill Son Goku. Some of the events would have happened the same. Now, we are going to skip to when, of course, Cell would still appear as Piccolo. By this point, he would have still left to go fuse with Kami. Now, here's the difference with Piccolo, though. Piccolo's actually stronger. Now, okay, hold on. Piccolo's still very powerful. I do believe he's on par with Super Saiyan Vegeta, especially by this point, maybe a little bit stronger. It wouldn't have mattered against the androids, and he knew that. As Piccolo before seemed to be kind of, he had to be relevant, maybe a little bit weaker than Vegeta in the original, but Piccolo here is a bit more stronger. Now, cutting to Piccolo and Kami. Now this is some differences that people might say is that, well, why doesn't Piccolo just unlock other people's potential? Wouldn't they not make him stronger? Piccolo will, and we'll get to that very quickly. Now cutting to when Piccolo would meet up with Kami, Piccolo would state that he's here to fuse with him. And Piccolo's actually a lot more calm, and he's more peaceful than Kami, as that's the elder guru within him. Kami can sense that he has two other people. One of them, he has a feeling that he knows. Piccolo would state that he fused with this warrior named Nail, and another being called Elder Guru, who's the elder of their entire Namekian species. Piccolo would then tell him that having fused with Elder Guru has opened my eyes a lot, and I cannot continue my evil ways, it's not right. But when we do fuse, I control the ship. Kami's way more less in well, he's way more inclined to fuse with Piccolo because he senses there's much more good within him. As Piccolo, by the time he fused with Kami, Piccolo was actually pretty chill. He wasn't really bad at all because he got the good side with Kami. But especially having Elder Guru, who's super peaceful, super wise, and super good, it would definitely boost his goodness up. So. Piccolo, before he would fuse with Kami, he would state that Elder Guru had some abilities as well. He wants to unlock Kami's potential. If they're going to fuse, might as well make the most out of it. Kami would agree and say that's the best option. Now, in terms of power levels, we know that Kami had a power level of roughly around 200 to 300 from what we know, but obviously he's very old and he can't fight very well. Unlocking his potential, I can definitely say that it can probably, because remember he's a lot older here, it can definitely bump his potential Power level wise, it's up to you. Either way, it's gonna be a massive buff in power, but Kami will probably get twice as strong. You could say 300, or if he's 200, it could be 400 to 600. So he's a little bit stronger, doesn't make big of a difference. But he is Piccolo's other half. Piccolo would then fuse with a stronger version of Kami, becoming much stronger. This version of Piccolo is a lot more powerful than Android 17 by this point because he already has Elder Guru on top of the fact that he has Kami who was twice as powerful. So the fusion is twice as strong. So Piccolo is way more powerful. Piccolo would have met up with Android 17 and 18 and 16 and they would have had their legendary battle. Piccolo during this point in time was way stronger than Android 17 as he would have outclassed him in every single way severely wounding him. Now, both the androids would have jumped in and fought Piccolo at this time, both of them teaming up. Piccolo was actually able to hold his own and able to fight both of them evenly. So it took two androids to face Piccolo. Now, Piccolo is getting tired, as again, these androids have infinite stamina. They can go in infinite energy, they can go on forever, while Piccolo can't. But they were shocked with how powerful Piccolo was. It makes no sense why he's that powerful. Android 16 was questioning to jump in, but it's not his place, as he wants to save his power and his whole reason to only fight Goku. But he does remark that Piccolo is vastly powerful. He's actually about as strong as he is, maybe even a bit stronger. Now by this point, Cell would have appeared, the same as before, to absorb the androids. Cell, I feel like, would have still nearly killed Piccolo because Piccolo burnt out all of his energy fighting, especially two people. Piccolo would still be severely wounded, he'd be thrown to the side, as of course Cronin then would have helped Piccolo. Quillen would still destroy the detonator because he simps and has to win with Android 18. I mean, come on, she's wife material. But that being said, 16 would give out his life to go fight Cell so the two Android can escape. Android 17 was too cocky. He would try to fight Imperfect Cell, but sadly it was too late as Imperfect Cell would absorb Android 17, becoming semi-perfect Cell. By this point, he would have easily overpowered Android 16 and Android 16 and Android 18 would now be in hiding. Now, we are going to cut all the way forward 
So of course, when Vegeta and Trunks were they were still going through the Hypoc time chamber, the same as before, they would then come out. Now this time around though, Vegeta, mind you, is roughly stronger than he was in the original. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. If Goku was stronger, wouldn't the androids be stronger and wouldn't Cell become stronger? The Cell no time skip. Well, to answer the first part of the question, the androids are roughly the same power. They were already stronger than the original ones. And Goku being a little bit stronger, it wouldn't necessarily change too much. You could say they're stronger, but for what it purposes, they're roughly the same. Now, as for Cell, Cell is roughly similar in power as well, but for Cell knowing time skip, you're going to have to find out. We will get into that very shortly. But if Cell knew time skip, you could say that he would have already tried to use it. Now, after this is done, after Piccolo fights Android 17, Goku was already done and he was done out in Kami's house, so he was still not able to go fight, but by this point, he was already surpassed. Now, Vegeta and Trunks would have finally came out, and this is when Vegeta would then transform into second grade Super Saiyan or Super Vegeta. He would have easily overpowered Semi-Perfect Cell. This version of Vegeta is a little bit stronger. Cell was on the back end, as no matter what he tried doing, Vegeta was just far too strong, and Vegeta was more confident than ever. His pride has been restored. Now, by around this point, Trunks would then tell Vegeta to hurry up, kill Cell. By this time, of course, we need to also dive into the fact that Vegeta's way too cocky, as Cell knows to mess with Vegeta. He would then finally see Android 18, as now is his chance to finally absorb her and become perfect. Vegeta would then jump in the way and say that's not going to happen. But Cell would then trick him. He would use his own pride and his own battle power as a saying against him. He would then tell Vegeta that if you let me absorb Android 18, I'll become way too powerful and I'll become the perfect warrior and you'll never be able to defeat me. Vegeta would then fall for the bait easily, as his ego is way too high. He would then allow Cell to absorb Android 18. Android 16 could not stop him, as Cell finally became perfect Cell. The fight between him and Vegeta would be very similar. Vegeta would have little to no effect on Cell, though his final flash would damage Cell, but Cell was holding back severely. Cell would then easily defeat Vegeta, and even if Trunks does come out and uses Super Saiyan Grade 3, looking like fake Broly, he would not be able to defeat this version of Cell. As Cell was far too powerful for Trunks either way, Trunks would have still been defeated, having no speed. By this point, since the Z Fighters were defeated, what is going to happen next? Well, Goku, by this point, he would have actually recovered from the Heart Fires. And now, of course, this is when Goku and Gohan were already kind of going into the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, as from we know. And this is when Cell would, you know, announce the Cell games. Goku and Gohan would then exit the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Piccolo would then go in. And then this is when Vegeta then goes in the Time Chamber again. Pretty much all that happens the exact same. It's where they all jump in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Now, within the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, Goku and Gohan try to push Super Saiyan further than it's ever gone. Now, with Goku's pure progress... This is where events are going to change. Goku was actually able to tap into Super Saiyan 2 with Gohan. Now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Goku's pure progress is busted. He's easily twice or more. He has more potential than he's ever had before. And he already knew that there was something very close to it. He just couldn't access it. But Gohan could. I feel like after seeing Gohan have access to it, Goku was just almost there, able to do it. But he sees that true anger could be the way to be able to access it, not the tingle in your back, like Super. He would then actually spend the rest of the time in there, as they left early. They would then spend the extra few months in there. With Gohan's help, Goku would use his anger to push into Super Saiyan 2. But it was not perfect, though. As Super Saiyan 2 drains a lot of energy, Goku has a lot to work for. But they choose to actually not go back to the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Because Goku saw how powerful Gohan was, but he thinks that both of them together, they can definitely fight Cell. Now, of course, the few days would then pass, all that would happen the same. Now, finally going into the Cell games. I feel like Goku would definitely go up first. And this is when Goku would then battle Cell in Super Saiyan. And this is when, when fighting back and forth with Cell, Goku sees that he's not going nowhere. Super Saiyan 2 is his kind of big trump card but he knows that if he uses it it also clouds his mind and it also severely drains his stamina he's not used to the form yet he would be a fool to go into it 
he saves it for the last resort. Now, he would actually use time skip on Cell, as he would then hit Cell right in the chest and Cell would then fly backwards. Cell wondered how did he just do that? He moved so quick that Cell couldn't even see what just happened, and he landed a perfect blow right to his vital points. Goku knows that he needs to attack Cell's vital points to weaken him. Goku would then continue using time skip as Cell would start to figure it out. Cell would then look at his hand and he would say, I see what you're doing. You're able to freeze time and then pause it. Dr. Jarrell had something about that in his database, but he could never truly figure it out as the times that you used it, the robot couldn't keep up with it. But I understand. Goku would then try using time skip again, but Cell would then increase his speed and he would actually use time skip on Goku. Cell learned the attack just from seeing Goku use it on him a few times. Cell would then be amazed at this attack, as it was incredible. You could freeze time for a very short moment. Now, okay, I know that some people can only use time skip, but S Goku is a part of Cell. He has Goku's DNA. It would be cool to have Cell have it. Goku was shocked that Cell was able to learn and use this power. Everyone else was. Now it was battle of the time skipping. Goku's time skip versus Cell's. Cell being much stronger and faster than Goku, Goku's time skip was ineffective. Cell even says that he doesn't even want to use this time skip as it's kind of boring. He, he can easily have killed you know, some Goku way long ago and killed everybody here. Goku does not have a choice now, as he would then transform into a Super Saiyan 2, delivering a full power Kamehameha wave hitting Cell. This would then blast Cell full force, knocking him out of the ring, which would then destroy the entire arena so there's nothing to knock out of, and Cell would be in bits and pieces. Only his cells remain. Cell would then come back, and he would be shocked that Goku had that burst in energy, but Goku burned out everything he had. As he was now in normal Super Saiyan, Master Super Saiyan, he had nothing left. Cell was excited to continue fighting, but he was still wounded a little bit. Goku would then state that he gives up, and he forfeits the match, which would shock everybody else. He would then tell Gohan to step up, which Gohan would, like the original, and Goku would give Cell a sensu bean, surprisingly enough, which would then shock everybody else, but Goku says not to worry about it, as he knows that his son is far stronger than he was. Vegeta would state even after that burst of power that you just showed, what was that? Goku states, oh, I like to call it a Super Saiyan 2 maybe? I don't know. I, I was barely able to access it as is, but Gohan here can use it a little bit better than me, but he has to get upset. You guys will just have to wait and see. And trust me, it'll be something you never want to forget. Gohan would then transform into a Super Saiyan, as he was already in one. He would then continue his fight with Cell. The fight would be very similar. You could say that Gohan's a bit stronger because he's because he had to train with a stronger version of his father. Against Cell wouldn't matter. Cell would then use time skip on Gohan just to be fun with him and goof off. He would still spawn out the Cell Juniors, and they would still torture everybody, making Gohan angry. As Cell heard Goku stating that when Gohan gets angry, he'll become even stronger than he ever was, which made Cell very excited. Android 16 would try to sacrifice himself by blowing himself up. When Mr. Kirk would then throw his head, he would still destroy Android 16, killing him, making Gohan snap. This is when Gohan would then transform into a Super Saiyan 2. Now, this version of Gohan as Super Saiyan 2 is a lot more powerful. He would easily overpower the Cell Juniors, killing them, and he would easily overpower Cell like he did before. Cell would even try to use his time skip, but it was useless against this version of Gohan. Gohan would then deliver a super powerful punch, which would then make Cell spit out Android 18, so Krillin wins. This also means that Cell reverts back to semi-perfect Cell, as Goku would tell Gohan to finish it quickly, they're running out of time. Now, by this point, they all had Sensu Beans, so they're back up to full strength, Gohan wants him to suffer the same as before. This is when Cell would then prepare to blow himself up. Goku has one idea. As if they touch Cell or hurt him in any way, he's going to blow up and destroy everything. Goku would then use every single ounce of his power, turning into a Super Saiyan 2 once again at full strength. He would then lock Cell in a special technique. He's been saving it, and it's in the time freeze. As you guys know, when Goku or Hit collects up all of his time skipping power, he collects it. He can then use it to freeze a person within time and trap them. It can also shield and put them away. Goku would actually take, you know, Cell 
and bring him to another dimension of time. As remember, Hit has done this before. He's able to move himself to another dimension while fighting Blue Goku in their second match. Now, would this theoretically work? It's Goku. He would find ways to push time skip further than it's ever gone. But he would use his own power to kind of shield against Cell's explosion. The blast was still massive. It was very similar to like Vegeta's final sacrifice, as but it was much more reduced. As now, Goku would have sacrificed himself and died, keeping Cell's blast contained. Now with this being said, everybody was super upset by this, until Cell would then reappear as Super Perfect Cell, nearly killing Trunks. Him and Gohan would have the same kind of key blast battle off, a beam struggle with both of them shooting the Kamehameha wave. Cell, of course, was much more powerful. Gohan only had one arm, he would still get injured. This is when Vegeta's little distraction, with Goku's encouragement, both of them working together, they would be able to defeat Cell, absolutely obliterating him, the same as the canon version. Now we are going to cut within seven years later. Peace was finally restored on Earth, as Gohan still slacked off on his training. Now rem remember, there was peace. He didn't really see a reason as to kind of, you know, mess around and, you know, continue training. Why? He kind of focused on his own studies. Now, of course, this is when the Supreme Kai and Kibito would travel to Earth to search for the sphere that Majin Buu was sealed in. Now, by this point, this is when Gohan would finally enter Orange Star High School, where he would still meet Videl. Gohan would still appear as the Great Saiyan Man, so he can now disguise himself while fighting crime. Now, of course, cutting forward a little bit, Videl would still find out that he's Great Saiyan Man, and then this is when she would then kind of, kind of make a deal with him that she won't tell everybody, unless Gohan teaches her how to fly and get stronger. So, with this being said, this is when they would kind of teach and learn together, and then this is when, of course, Goten would have uh, trained with Gohan, he would have turned Super Saiyan. Also, Vegeta would then find out that Trunks turned Super Saiyan. All that would happen the exact same. Nothing else really changes. Now, the 25th World Martial Arts Tournament takes place. Now, Goku would still return for a single day to compete. Now, this is when, of course, you would also have Gohan face off Kibito, since, you know, Spopovich nearly killed Videl. Gohan would still turn Super Saiyan 2, but his energy was stolen, and they would allow it. Now, this is when the Supreme Kai would ask for the Z Fighter's help in stopping Babidi from releasing Majin Buu. They would then agree and follow the energy source that they've taken from Gohan. Now, this is when they would then go into Babidi's ship. Now, with the events of them fighting Majin's kind of like goons or his main warriors, Vegeta still has a massive grudge against Goku, especially since Gohan and Goku both have went Super Saiyan 2. Yeah, he's not happy. This is his only chance to fight Goku, and now they're wasting on this Majin nonsense, whatever it is. And he's furious. But even then, Kakarot's always been so much more stronger than him. And he can sense how much stronger Goku is, especially since 7 years. Now this is when Vegeta would have easily killed Pui Pui. And Goku would have still faced off against Yakon. He would have burst into Super Saiyan 2, overpowering Yakon's energy eating ability. And it would have made him blown up. Now this is also when Gohan would begin his battle with Debora, the same as before. Now Gohan being a little bit stronger does make a bit of a difference, but... He slacked off for seven years. He's hella rusty. He would not be able to defeat Deborah the same as before. Now, this is when Vegeta would allow Babidi to kind of consume him and take him over so he can grow strong enough to fight Goku. Now, with Goku and Vegeta, they would then fly off the same rocky wasteland as before, as Babidi could teleport them either way. Vegeta would then ignore Babidi's restraints to try and control him, as Vegeta will not let anybody control him. He can have his body, but he will never have his pride. As Goku would both be in, and Vegeta would both be in Super Saiyan 2, the fight would be very, very intense. Now, even though Vegeta has trained as hard as he originally did and with the Babidi boost, Goku is still too strong for Vegeta. Remember, he's had seven years to train, and the fact that he has pure progress, it's really scary with how powerful Goku can get. Now, Goku by this point has a way better control over Super Saiyan 3. He's actually able to transform into Super Saiyan 3 much quicker than his original self, and he's able to hold the power a lot faster too. Super Saiyan 2 is mastered, of course, but with Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta even sees that he was holding back. As Goku would then go to his full power as Super Saiyan 2 to stop Vegeta, Vegeta would still not give up. He would try the Big Bang attack, the final flash, Goku was still too strong as Vegeta would then accept defeat. 
until they realized that Majin Buu was still revived. Goku would make the worst mistake, he would drop his guard. Goku did the honor to Vegeta by not using time skip, as he said that it just feels better to fight him Saiyan to Saiyan. Which Vegeta wouldn't like that he's holding back, but Goku never used it. Goku would still be knocked out by Vegeta, Vegeta would still take a sensu bean and go fight Majin Buu. Now, with Vegeta being roughly the same strength, he would have no chance against Fat Buu. Majin Buu was way too powerful for him, the fight would go very similar, with Vegeta knowing what he has to do. He threw everything he could at this creature, but it just would not die. So, with this being said, this is now when we're going to cut a little bit forward and we're going to go to when Vegeta would then sacrifice himself after knocking out Goten and Trunks. Piccolo would then take Goten and Trunks away, Vegeta would then sacrifice himself, nearly killing Majin Buu, but it wasn't enough. Buu would then heal and he would still save Babidi's life and they would go about destroying the entire city. That being said, Goku would then recover and he would then go tell Trunks to go get the Dragon Radar to wish people back. By this time, he needs to distract Buu. Now, Goku would then go Super Saiyan 3, and he would go much quicker. Within 5 minutes, you could say he could go within 10 seconds or so. Goku being much more powerful than Majin Buu here, he would easily overpower him. He could have killed him and defeated him in the original, but he never did. Now, the reason why he never did is because he saw that there was good within Buu, and he wanted the boys to grow strong enough to fight without him, and to have some fun. Simple Dragon Ball mistakes. The same events would then transpire, as now we are going to talk about the fact that Goku would then kind of change Buu's mind and make Buu kind of be free of Bobbity. and this is when, you know, Buu would then kill Bobbity, same as before. Now, this is when he wants the fusion of Goten and Trunks to be the one who kills Buu. Now, this is when, after of course teaching Goten and Trunks, how to do it, Goku would have to return to the afterlife, and this is when he would also meet up with Gohan. Now, Gohan would accidentally use the Z-Sword and break it, and this is when the old Kai would then appear. Now, of course, this is when after meeting up with Gohan, he would agree to unlock his sleeping power, aka his potential. Now, after doing the ceremony, which will take a long time, who would then befriend Mr. Satan? Now, as we know, Mr. Satan would try to kill him at first, but then he becomes best friends with him. And now, because of this, though, this is when Mr. Satan was then shot. As then, the dog was also shot as well. Boo would then snap. As then, Boo's evil and good side would then split, causing the creation of Evil Boo. Now, Evil Boo and Good Boo would then start fighting. Now, in this time around, this is when the Evil Boo would still win, taking over Boo, turning him to chocolate as he blew the beam back at Boo. And this is when I believe that now Super Boo is now born. With Super Boo now being born, same events would have happened the exact same as Super Boo would pretty much kill everybody on the planet. As now with that being said, Gotenks would have still appeared as Boo would have still waited at the lookout for Ghost and Trunks to finish training, but he was tired of waiting. Piccolo would then take the long way down as they would then finally meet up with Gotenks and the Hyperball Time Chamber battling. But the problem is, is that with Gotenks only using Super Saiyan, Boo was bored. And he was not being able to defeat him. Piccolo would then destroy the Hypoc Time Chamber door. Boo would then freak out as he wasn't able to eat candy and chocolate. He would then scream really loud and then a port would then open. Goten and Piccolo would still be able to get an escape as Gotenks can still use Super Saiyan 3. With that being said, the fight would be intense between the two as they were seemingly equal in power. But the fusion time would then run out as they forgot about that. Luckily, before they were destroyed by Boo, who was angry, Gohan would then appear in his new mystic form. Gohan's power level was roughly the same, as now with this time around, Gohan would have easily handled Super Boo, defeating him, but he got too cocky. Boo would then wait for Gotenks to then refuse, as he would then absorb them the same as before, becoming Bootenks. Now, Boo Tanks would then easily overpower Mystic Gohan. Goku would then appear again as, remember, the Elder Kai gave Goku his life back. So, he would give Goku his life, which could, that means that Goku can go back on Earth alongside with Vegeta. Now, Goku would try to fuse with Gohan, but Gohan would still miss grabbing the earring. He would still be absorbed, alongside with Piccolo as well. Now, Boo would get massively stronger, becoming Boo Han. This is when him and Vegeta would try fighting Boo at first, but they would have no chance as then they would finally be able to fuse into Vegito. 
Now this version of Vegito is actually stronger because of Goku. Now, we all know that it doesn't matter. Vegito would easily outclass Buhan. The fight would be very similar. And Vegito would still allow himself to be uh, absorbed by Boo, but the magic would wear off the earrings plot, and he would still defuse. Now, this also means that Goku and Vegeta would have traveled around Boo's body. They would still be able to free everybody. Vegeta would have still made the tough decision by, of course, making Boo freak out as he was going to kill them both in his body by ripping out Majin Boo as well. This is when Kid Boo would then appear. Now, Kid Boo would pretty much destroy planet Earth the same as before. As it was within five minutes of him appearing, this is when Goku and them would all be teleported and they would escape going off to the Kai world. Now, the similar events would happen the exact same with Kid Buu appearing, fighting Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Remember, Super Saiyan 2 Goku is a bit stronger, so he's actually able to hold his own against Buu a lot better. Now, once when Goku goes Super Saiyan 3, he would actually be able to overpower Kid Buu. But the problem was that he's burning through energy either way. Even though he has a better mastery, he's getting nowhere. But this is where some events are going to change. Vegeta would allow Goku to try and charge up his energy. Goku would be able to. As, remember, Goku has a way better mastery over Super Saiyan 3 than his original self. He would then power up a full power Command Man Wave, and this is when he, him, alongside with Vegeta, as Kid Buu was actually able to hold the beam back, Vegeta would then join in as Super Saiyan 2 and shoot a full power Final Flash, both of them teaming up one last time, killing Kid Buu, wiping him off the face of existence. That being said, peace was finally restored to the entire universe, as life was finally normal again. Until, a little bit later, a certain purple cat would then awaken. Now, with this being said, this is also when Gohan and Videl get married, and Videl becomes pregnant, same as before. This is when Beerus would then awaken, and kind of figure out, like, oh, okay, so something's going on. Now, this is roughly a few years later. He would still have a dream about a, a rival that can match his power. He figures it out, a Super Saiyan God. Whis would still explain Goku and the surviving other Saiyans. Beerus would be interested. Now, Goku, I feel like, would still be on King Kai's planet. Now, how would he be there? Plot reasons. He would still be there. Training, same as before. His match with Beerus would go a little bit more differently. As with Goku being a much more powerful Super Saiyan 3, he would be able to hold off a few more punches, but the end result's still the same. Beerus is far too powerful. Goku would try to use his time skip on Beerus, which would surprise him, and he would actually be able to land a single blow, but it wouldn't do anything to him. Beerus was intrigued. Until Goku tries again, Beerus would then catch his fist and state that that move will not work on me. But that's an incredible power that you're able to freeze time for a small second. That's a rare gift. He would then be bored, as he would then head back on the Earth to go see where Vegeta's at. After meeting Prince Vegeta, he would then be enticed by food. Now, also mind you, Majin Buu's still alive, so him and Buu would begin fighting over the pudding, which Beerus would then snap and freak out. He would easily defeat everybody in his way. Vegeta would still get angry, transforming into a Super Saiyan 2. Seeing Bulma being slapped, he would try and attack Beerus, giving him everything that he has. It would still not be enough. Now, with Goku arriving, they would still do the Saiyan God ritual, with Videl joining in as well, having Pan in her. This is when Goku would then transform into a Super Saiyan God. With Goku being much more powerful than his original self, his Super Saiyan God form is actually a lot stronger. Now, to Beerus, it doesn't really matter. Beerus is as strong as the plot needs him to be, as the fight between him and Beerus would be intense. Goku would also incorporate his time skip abilities as well, making Beerus have a much more thrilled time fighting Goku. With this being said, the fight would go very similar, just adding in some time skip. Which Beerus is still not really used to, because Goku has many different versions of time skip that he can use against Beerus. This is when they would then fly up into outer space. Beerus notes that the Saiyan's power was only increasing. Remember, Goku here has pure progress like Hit does. His power continues to grow the more damage that he takes, the more if he's being overpowered, he grows vastly stronger. His time skip was only growing sharper and faster. Beerus was not expecting this, but he does sense that the Saiyan is only growing much stronger, which only makes him more excited. He wants to see how far the Saiyan can go. But the power was beginning to waver. Goku would then use Time Freeze on Beerus, and he would then use the time skip on top of that with everything that he had. He would then use a full power punch, 
with all of his Saiyan God power infused with this fist, which would actually hit Beerus full force, shaking the entire universe. Beerus has never felt a punch hit him that hard in a very, very long time. Only a few people can punch that hard. He would then commend the Saiyan, but Beerus was even bleeding. Goku would then lose his Saiyan God power, but he was not done. As a Super Saiyan, he was able to infuse the God's power, becoming stronger. Beerus would then shoot a full power supernova at Goku, which Goku would then burst into Saiyan God once more, being able to destroy the supernova. That being said, Goku was completely out of energy. He used up everything he had against Lord Beerus, but he couldn't save the Earth. Beerus would then destroy a very, very tiny rock. And he would state that, uh, well, I destroyed the planet, just like I promised. And he likes the Earth food way too much. He would offer Goku to come train on his planet, as Goku proved himself way more than he originally did, and him and Vegeta does not need to beg like they did in the original. He would even tell Whis to come pick the Saiyan up when he's back home and he's sleeping, which Whis would then agree. They would actually offer Goku to come with him right now if he really wants to. Goku would easily accept this offer. Vegeta wants to come along, and Beerus would kind of think about it, and Beerus is like, can your wife make a bunch of food and bring it to me? And Vegeta would look at Bulma and Bulma and he would plead her. And Bulma's like, I'll send you a bunch of capsules every single day of food if you want. Beerus is like, okay, you're in. As food is easily able to entice the God of Destruction, Vegeta would finally come along as he's not going to be surpassed by Kakarot for too long. He wants to unlock that Saiyan God power himself. Now, we are now going to cut into the Resurrection F Saga. Now, Frieza would have still been revived like his original self. That wouldn't really change too much. Now, Goku and Vegeta would have unlocked Super Saiyan Blue. All that would have happened the same. Gohan and the others fighting Frieza's men would have happened the same. Frieza would have trained for the similar time that he did. Now, once when they all meet up to go fight, the only events here that would change is once when Frieza uses the planet destroying attack, he would try to show the planet because he ran out of energy. Goku would use time skip and he would actually be able to stop Frieza before he could. Now he would have killed Frieza here, taking Vegeta's thunder again, which Vegeta was furious about, but Frieza was finally dealt with. But other than that, the match between Goku and Frieza would have gone similar. Goku wouldn't be beaten as badly, he would actually be able to match Frieza and overpower him a little bit in their match, especially using time skip. Vegeta would get more limelight fighting Frieza, as Goku kind of wants to give Free uh, Vegeta more thunder to go fight him, but Goku would still take the win in the end. And that is it for this one, if you guys think of for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys have made it all the way through this super long part. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll talk to you all later.